Okay, I'm going to begin the second lecture now. If we'd, I'll read the content from Family Pledge number two. As the owner of Channel Gook, our family pledge is centering on true love to attend God and true parents, becoming a representative family and a central family. We pledge to perfect the dutiful way of filial sons and daughters in our family, patriotism in our nation, saints in the world, and divine sons and daughters in heaven and earth. So, here as well, the first point begins again with that uh, our family is the owner of Chanogu, centering on true love. Connected with that, then attending God and true parents. So after we've achieved our original homeland, become a true family centering on God, we need to become centered on God and true parents. We attend God and true parents. And from that point, we become a representative family. We become a central family in the cosmos. So the cosmos, a word like that, this is a, a word that Father created, the original Korean term that is. So the meaning of this expression in the Korean word Chonju, which means cosmos, roughly cosmic in English, it is the fusion of both the spirit world and the physical world, is the way Father defined it. So we become a representative of that. Our family becomes a representative. And the course of God was to become the center of true love. So our family becomes a central family, centering on God. Central means that there's only one family, there's only one center. So from that viewpoint, in our family, the way of filial sons and daughters. So filial sons and daughters in our family, it means loving our parents. But of course, in the concept of the family pledge, everything that we accomplish in the family is then connected over to the next level in the nation. And so in the nation, we become patrons. We expand that further, and we're talking about the world. Then we expand that to the final level, is the unity of heaven and earth. So in a family, it says filial sons and daughters, but the most important thing is that the filial path of sons and daughters is attending the parents. Why do we need to live centering on attending our parents? So traditionally, we talk about a filial path is attending our parents with all our heart and all our mind and all our effort. We are born from our parents. Everything that we have comes from our parents. Therefore, where is the center of myself? It is my parents. Anything in the world, that's not the center of myself. So whether it's knowledge or the academic teaching that we learn in the world, this is not the center of our being. The center of my mind and my heart are my parents. From my parents I was born. Everything I have comes from my parents. And for that reason we live the filial way in our family. If we look at the uh, Chinese character for patriots or loyalty, it's uh, comprised of the characters for heart and the character for center. So the center of my heart is what loyalty represents. So who's the center? It's the parents. If we expand that concept, who is our parent eternally? That's God. God is our parent and our center. And then when God manifests in the physical world in a substantial form, that's Christ. That's true Father. That's the Messiah. So doing all our, our uh, filial duty to God or to our parents means attending God in that way and attending the Messiah in that way as well. So the family is also accomplished uh, not just that 
that vertical connection offering to our parents, but then the relationship between men and women are what establishes the family, and that's the horizontal level. And so the family is the fusion of that vertical and that horizontal in one place. In the family, the parents live for the sake of their children, sacrifice for them. Within the nation, the center of the nation needs to live for the sake of the people of the nation. Needs to invest themselves to educate the people of the nation. If the, if the people of the nation don't have any money, then that person who is the center of the nation should give of their own foundation to raise the people of the nation. And then, true patriot, even if my own children are hungry, I need to feel the children of the nation. That's the heart of the patriot, of the leader of the nation. That's the way of the parent, the way of the father. So the person who then is the center of the nation, for example, the president, then we need to give our dedication and loyalty to that person because that person represents the nation standing in that central position. However, we can't really have true loyalty on the national level without having filial piety within our family. That patriotism is an expansion, an extension of true filial piety. However, if we have that filial heart within ourselves on the family level, then wherever we go, we express that. And then on whatever level we emerge or appear on, then we express those things in the way of patriots, the way of saints. So why do we attend our parents as the center of the family? They represent the lineage. God is the same, true parents are the same. It's through our parents that we receive our lineage. So according to Father's word, a family that is perfected will attend God, attend their parents. If you can't attend your parents, don't even think about attending God. If you don't love your parents, can't love God. If you don't love God, how can you love human beings? If you know how to love human beings, you know how to love your parents. And as a husband, you know how to love your wife. And as a wife, you know how to love your husband. And you love your parents. And love brothers and sisters together. Centering on true love, only with true love, does this become possible. True love has the vertical connection, love towards the parents. However, that vertical love has no surface area. So when it's expressed on the horizontal level between the husband and the wife, the man and the woman, that's when it manifests on the horizontal level. So, the fidelity between husband and wife, between all the citizens of the nation, is important. Loving my husband, attending my husband with fidelity, that's the way of the wife. And if the husband in the place of heaven loves my wife with the heart of heaven, then the wife will want to unite with the husband.
in the fallen world, we don't see this order and this structure and the correct path. And only in the original world, following that original order is important. So the path of human beings is the path of accomplishing God's purpose, and that's the path that the principle teaches us. So in the nation, patriots. In the world, saints. The saints live for the sake of the world. They sacrifice themselves individually, sacrifice their families, even sacrificing their nations to serve the world. If you cannot overcome the level of the nation, you cannot become a saint. When you love the world more than you love your nation, more than you love your family, more than you love yourself, that's when you become a saint. You work. But not all religious people become saints. So we think of Socrates or um, Buddha, Muhammad, these great saints. Who is the saints? These were all saints. However, if we think who is the saint of saints, that's Jesus. Jesus is the center of all people who love and live for the sake of the world. The Messiah, Jesus, is the one who comes as the owner who can restore God's sons and daughters. So if Jesus had lived and established a family, he would have given the blessing to remove the original sin. So of all the saints in human history, the saint of saints is the Messiah. If we look at the character for saint, the Chinese character, on the left we have the character for ear, and on the right we have the character for mouth. So ear is something through which we can understand God's word. And with our mouth, we should be speaking God's word or expressing the word in the right way. Also, we need to use our mouth in the right way. If we eat the wrong food, it can kill us. So what we use our mouth for and what we use our ears for, we shouldn't be just careless and haphazard in how we use them. So with the character for ear, if you cut off the different corners, it looks the same as the character for eye. There are four points on the character for ear. If you, if you chop them off, it becomes the character for eye. So underneath the character for ear and the character for words is the character for king, the king of listening and the king of speaking. King lives for the sake of the, his people, listens to the people, and educates the people. So, just as a king lives for the sake of his people, a saint is someone who lives for the sake of the world in the same way, with that same heart, listens to the people of the world, and teaches the people of the world in the correct way. This is a saint. And that person is someone who transcends national borders. In the fallen world, we do have saints. We have kings. We don't have saints in the fallen world. Oh, sorry, divine sons and daughters. We don't have divine sons and daughters in the fallen world because they come as God's, as God's son. The divine son comes as God's son. So even though we have saints, we do not have divine sons and, uh, sons and daughters in the fallen world. So the correct path of the family begins from the divine sons, the divine sons and daughters. If you look at Father's words, in uh, 280, in the 280th volume, 
on page 77, you can say, Father says that the name of the Messiah is the true parent. And this is not a word that Father created for himself. It is the title that God gave him, the true parent. The ideal of the true parent needs to be perfected. And true parent is not something that can be accomplished by himself. So even though father is a man by himself, and internally he has the heart of the parent. And then together with the woman creates the family. So divine son. When the family listens to the words and the teaching of the Divine Son and becomes united with that, then we become the children of God. That's how we become the children of God. So there's a path, the correct path of the family. Within the family, it includes the path of the parents, the path of the children, the path of the husband, the path of the wife. And the and even within the path of the parents, there is the path of the father and the path of the mother. And if we leave that path, it's no good. We cannot accomplish God's will. And the husband has his path and the wife has her path. And then the elder brother has his path and the younger brother has his path. Older older siblings and younger siblings. Each have their individual paths. Older sister, younger sister. And this kind of content, all of these paths only occur within the family. So when husband and wife, in order to become parents, they need to pass through the stage of husband and wife. So the son's path, and the parent's path, husband's path. So someone who's passed through the path of the child and then through the path of the husband and wife can rise to the position of the parents. Therefore, in the pledge, we say, we pledge to perfect the way of the family of divine sons and daughters. My family, our family, our husband and wife, we will execute this, accomplish these things. This is the core of the second verse of the family pledge. Do you want to switch? Now we go to verse 3 of the family pledge. There's the uh, our family centering on our uh, true love, uh, the owner's owner of our uh, Chunuk. Uh, we attend the uh, God and uh, our true parents, and we become. Uh, we so always uh, in the uh, beginning of the family pledge, it uh, says that we uh, we are the owner of Chunuk. And our family, and this is the same with every verse from beginning to end. This is the basis, and then on that uh, foundation. Um, the verse 3 says that we, we uh, see the term uh, four great realms of heart. So the four great realms of heart are the heart of the uh, parents, uh, that is the uh, parents, the uh, husband and wife, uh, the um, brother and sister, siblings, uh, and the uh, children. That's, uh, and then the center is God. So among uh, God's hearts, the, uh, there is the four great realms of heart. And then the... Uh, that, uh, that, that is the uh, original substance of uh, God, God's uh, Shimjong. So if we say God, then we have, we, he is the original substance and the owner of the four great realms of heart. And so there is the parent's heart there and the husband and uh, wife heart, the uh, children's uh, uh, and the uh, siblings heart. So uh, we call these four, the uh, four great realms of heart. And together we call these the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Shimjong of God. And then we see the four great realms of heart and the three great kingships. The, so the uh, Kwan here is, um, uh, there is a two Kwan. Uh, both are Kwan here in, um, um, one means area and one means authority. 
So in Korean, they are pronounced the same, but the meaning is very different. So in the realm of the four grails of heart, uh, then that is what it says here. It, is, it, it means an area, it, it means a, a circumference. But then when we see, talk about the great kingships, the quan there is the authority. So actually the English translation should also include the authority. The authority is the... And so this does not mean a power uh, of the fallen world, but this authority uh, means uh, uh, is centered on God's lineage. And uh, God's lineage is eternal. And uh, uh, the king... Uh, whether it's a king or uh, the president, uh, uh, all have a certain term in office. Uh, the president, the prime minister, must uh, leave at some that office at some time. But God's uh, three uh, great kingships, though God's lineage uh, is eternal, and uh, and no one can ignore that uh, uh, authority, and no one uh, uh, no one can deny it. It is eternal, and so the and so we have the. The uh, uh, so here we have the authority of the three great kingships, and authority uh, means that uh, we must accomplish uh, God's will, uh, centered on uh, God's lineage and uh, on the family, uh, which is based on true, uh, true love. That is the love that wants to give and give and give, give eternally. More that gives, uh, more wants to give, and that is true love. And uh, and uh, even if it gives for eternity, there is no end to its a desire to give. And it never grows bored or tired of giving. So those people, the people who, uh, uh, with that kind of heart, come together, that is the kingdom of heaven. And so the so people who two people come together with that kind of heart, that is the uh, uh, kingdom of heaven. And and if the uh, if the uh, father and son uh, love in that way, that is the kingdom of heaven. And if siblings love that way, that is the kingdom of heaven. And so then. And so, uh, so the family in the family, uh, we say that we are trained in God's Shimjong and educated in God's Shimjong. And the church, this church, is a place where people who are trained in that way uh, to come together and to uh, confirm each other's what we've learned and to um, and, uh, experience uh, true love and to give true love. And, and uh, if there's something that uh, you are lacking in your family, then learn about that uh, from your uh, brothers and sisters uh, so that you can uh, supplement that in your own family. So the church then uh, it means a teach the and uh, the uh, the first uh, the in the word for church in Korean has a uh, two uh, characters and the one uh, uh, one the first character uh, on the left hand side is the word for uh, filial piety on the right hand side uh, is the word for as the character for father and so the uh, to teach means to uh, to uh, uh, express a filial piety towards the father. And then the uh, second character is, for, is means nurture, and the part of that nurture means uh, is, uh, refers to the physical body. So it is to nurture the physical body and to teach the physical body. So, so uh, in principle, this is the place where we complete our able uh, complete our character uh, and become uh, holy people. And so, and so to guide uh, the the uh, nurturing of the and the teaching of the physical of our and the physical world. So the. The uh, four great realms and um, the authority of the three great king king kingships. Uh, please uh, understand this, um, and um, this we will talk about this later because this third verse is actually extremely important. And without this, uh, God's will, uh, uh, without this, uh, God's will cannot be accomplished. In fact, without this, the third verse, uh, verse one, cannot be uh, accomplished, because uh, here uh, everything is based on the family, and this third verse talks about what must be in the family. And we will, so we will be treating this uh, uh, verse three uh, separately uh, later on in the workshop. And then people who have this lineage, uh, not just our family, but uh, they, they, when they become society, they become the world. Uh, then that will be a world that is a center on God's lineage, and the people then, will, the people of that world, will be God's sons and daughters, and be the royal family. And and. Um, uh, and father said that the uh, father said that this would be the uh, imperial family. The, the, so the and here also this is a realm. Now this is not the authority of a royal family, but the realm of the royal family. Um, and to uh, and father said that all these people will be members of the uh, God's royal family. And then we uh, pledge that we will uh, complete this. Um, and that we perfect this. Who? I will. In our family. And so 
the third verse, uh, by accomplishing this, uh, then the, the uh, God's uh, ideal in the first and uh, second verse uh, will be accomplished, and then fourth, fifth, and all the way to the eighth verse will be accomplished, as on the basis of this third verse. So then we go to uh, verse 4. As the owner of Chanyuguk, our family pledges by centering on true love, and we've already explained that, Full, fulfill God's ideal of creation to build the universal family encompassing heaven and earth and perfect the world of freedom, peace, unity, and uh, happiness. And so then, so then uh, in verse three, 3, we said that we must accomplish the uh, four realms of heart. So then based on that, uh, we, uh, that actually is the ideal of creation. Uh, and this is the universal family encompassing uh, heaven and earth. In other words, uh, encompassing the earthly world and the heavenly world, the spiritual world. Uh, so that uh, so that means that God's family has been accomplished uh, in the world. Uh, this is the universal family, and not just my family, but uh, the great universal family. Uh, so Seven point three billion uh, people in the world uh, will be, of course, have each have their own families, uh, but they will all be in one family. And when they go to spirit world, they will all be members of God's family. And so then, uh, so uh, this uh, universal family this of the heaven and earth. And this will be, uh, this will be uh, accomplished. And then for the first time there, we'll have freedom, we'll have peace and for the first time there. And there will be unity that can never be divided. And uh, there uh, we have a happiness uh, where the people there will be happy. So we are... Um, we are pledging to accomplish that kind of world. So who is to, who's going to do this? If uh, someone else does it, uh, we cannot just live there, but we have to, we have to uh, become that kind of person and become the owner of that type of, of, uh, of world. That is our personal responsibility. So no one can do it for us. So then the, the uh, universal family uh, encompassing heaven and earth. And so that is God's ideal of creation. And then number five, uh, as the owner of Chernuguk, our family pledges to center on true love, to strive every day to advance the unification of the spirit world as subject partner and the physical, physical world as object partner. So here, uh, owner of Chernuguk, uh, our family. And what do we do? With what? Uh, with, uh, with true love, we are the owner of Chernuguk. But then, then that true love uh, we say that, that when a true love is uh, uh, accomplished, uh, that will be God's kingdom, and so that will be true not only on earth but also in heaven. And so then, uh, the spirit world, the heavenly world, will be the subject partner, and the physical world, the earthly world, will be object partner. So, uh, if God is the uh, subject partner, then human beings are the uh, uh, object partner. Uh, if the parents are subject, uh, the uh, children are object. And if the father is subject partner, the wife is a uh, wife is a uh, mother is an object partner. And the husband and wife uh, uh, the same way. Uh, um, um, then and that the older brother, younger brother, a subject and object. And so, so everyone we all have the lives in these relationships, and then this uh, order of that uh, the the di discipline order of that uh, relationship is the object partner and subject partner. And so then the, uh, between the heavenly world and the earthly, earthly world, the uh, spirit world is subject partner and the physical world is the object partner. So we cannot be confused about this. That today, in these days, uh, we, the Family Federation says that uh, our father is in the spirit world uh, and the substantial body uh, mother is the, in the uh, physical world. And so uh, therefore, uh, physical world is subject and the uh, spirit world is object. No, that is the reverse of uh, God's uh, order that God established. That's not principle. Then no matter, they even, no matter how much they try to explain their position, it's wrong because it's not principle. It's not Father's words, so it's wrong. So, so then the, where is the, the subject partner is the spirit world, and what is then the object partner is the physical world. So then these are currently separated, and they have to be united. So how are they to be united? The so they not it has to be a gradual, gradual unification, now, advancing. Now advancing means a good, what, is it even and uh, keep going, keep going, even second by second, even a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. 
So go and then rest. The fact that you are resting is not development, it's actually retreat if you are resting. So if it's difficult and, and you rest, well, you say, well, how, how, is that, how is that retreating? God's, because God's providence is always going forward. So if I'm resting, then uh, in rel relation to God's providence, I'm retreating. Uh, so so uh, always we have to be moving forward and advancing. Uh, and uh, to rest means to retreat. So in our life of faith, if we say, oh, well, uh, it's difficult, so I'm going to rest for a while, uh, then what would you say? That, that is actually uh, retreating. And so, so we must never rest. We must re never rest, but always advance. And Father explained it this way. He said that the life of faith, the path of faith, is like a, uh, a creek that is uh, uh, flowing down uh, rocks. And so we must uh, continually advance up, upstream because there's, there's uh, so if, we, uh, uh, if I'm in a rowboat and trying to uh, go up the, upstream uh, of, of that uh, river, he said. So if you rest then, if you rest, then the uh, then that uh, uh, tide is then that uh, stream is going to uh, uh, push you that back down, and then and then your bow will change direction. And then, so he said that you must, until you die, even if you die on the way, uh, you must never let go of the oars, and that is the path of faith. So because uh, behind that is Satan, and so in the, uh, and so that is why the Bible says pray without ceasing. And he said to be awake. And he said to be joyful in all things and be grateful. So that is how we keep Satan from invading. So do we have to, so even we, would you have to be, difficult, be grateful for difficult things? Yes, we do. Because that is what keeps us, keeps us Satan from invading. So uh, everyone else may be turning away. But uh, if a person uh, among that uh, though, is grateful for, even for that difficulty, uh, then uh, then, and he is a, a continuing in God's word. And so then we have to have that kind of heart, and a person with that kind of heart is a person who advances and develops. And then, but then, but uh, but uh, uh, go as quickly as possible, to con and uh, to uh, and to uh, to encourage ourselves. So. And so in a horse race, uh, even though the horse is going as fast, fast as it can, the uh, jockey will be whipping uh, it. And so that, it's the same thing. So, uh, so God is always uh, whipping us in that way. So uh, we, are, we are going as fast as we can, but he's telling us to go faster, even faster. Uh, so in the uh, same way, the, uh, a, 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 a track and field um, uh, person who is in the Olympics, and he's uh, on the starting line, and... Yeah, he's uh, representing his nation in the Olympics, and and uh, and uh, he's uh, running as fast as he can. But uh, all the people in the uh, stands are standing up and and uh, shouting at him to go faster. Uh, but why is that? In order to have victory, to be to, in order to win. So uh, also God is the same. We uh, even though we are in a place where we are so tired that we fall down. Uh, but uh, God says, no, you're not dead. Uh, get up and continue going. Uh, and that is, that is love. Do you understand? So you, you think that uh, God uh, may be very, uh, very harsh on us, uh, but, uh, and even though we try everything and then we uh, fall down, still uh, he takes us by the hand uh, and he wants us to uh, continue to move forward. So here... This uh, thing that uh, should be here, uh, fell, let's say it fell down to the floor. So it cannot come up here by itself. I have to go, uh, lean down and pick it up. So same way with the fallen people, so fallen human beings. So as long as uh, we are on this earth, God and Satan is watching us. God, Both God and Satan are watching us. Today, uh, in, this, uh, in this hour, uh, God is behind each of you, watching each of you. But also, Satan is watching you. So, you don't know that, but in my in our heart, when I when we have the heart that uh, God desires, then Satan uh, cannot uh, invade there, 
but but he doesn't uh, get completely go away though because if we start to complain uh, then uh, Satan is able to relate to us and uh, our relationship with God is broken this is the uh, situation of whole fallen human beings because human fallen human beings are in the mid midway position and so as we are going along uh, wh how far does Satan follow us until until we die that is how uh, uh, now here here it, uh, at the edge but uh, at at the edge here and uh, in order to and Satan separates when this thing drops and so but when it comes to the edge here that far Satan is able to follow us but when it falls to the floor Satan is not able to fall down with it and so then that is when God comes uh, once we are our, we are our, our legs are broken and we are bleeding uh, but he uh, heals us uh, and uh, uh, brings us back uh, to the to him that is when he says oh that is when Satan is separated from us and that is when God can say you are my son you are my daughter uh, that may be a very harsh but that is the that is the way that uh, of restoration by which uh, uh, fallen human beings are able to uh, return to our father and so we must uh, um, uh, offer sincerity and dedication uh, even to the point of death and so so every day every day so every every day it says um, so even uh, the hour of uh, the uh, uh, to the minute and to the, uh, the second and it says every day every day so that uh, so that the spirit world and the physical world can be uh, united so we must always advance and uh, uh, so that they can advance uh, that is uh, our uh, our mission and when it's difficult for us to do it alone alone uh, then the wife uh, can help and if I'm tired and uh, not able to go any further then the wife can take my hand and uh, uh, give me water, give me medicine, uh, and uh, uh, help me stand up again so that I can have energy. And that the and if the uh, and if the wife is in that situation, the husband has to help her, uh, so that uh, uh, we so that is how we can uh, uh, go forward that way. So that if the children are, uh, are like that, then the parents must help the children. And if the uh, if the parents are in trouble, then the children must help them. Uh, and uh, uh, the siblings also must help each other in the same way. So that kind of heart uh, is the uh, is the heart that can uh, that can encourage us and uh, advance us uh, towards uh, unity. So uh, that is the, God's uh, ideal of creation is the family, and that is the kind of family that we must have. And we are making a pledge here to have that kind of family and to become uh, that kind of person. So so we, we cannot just pledge this and not do it. So, so, but uh, doing it or not doing it is our own uh, responsibility. If we do it, we'll be uh, our owners, and if we don't, we will just be washed away or become servants. Verse 6. As the owner of Chanyu Guk, our family pledges by centering on true love to become a family representing God and true parents. We will perfect a family that moves heavenly fortune and conveys heaven's a blessing to our uh, surroundings. So here, we talked about the three, uh, four uh, realms of heart and the three great kingships. And uh, that with that uh, uh, verse three, that we can accomplish a, a four and five. And then, so the, uh, on a, the uh, advance towards the uh, unity of a uh, uh, spirit world and physical world to become that kind of person and that kind of, and that we ourselves uh, be, and here we coming the representing God and true parents. We ourselves, that our family now, uh, representing who? God and true parents. That, that we were in the place of God and true parents, or representing God and true parents. The, so that, that is the authority of the blessed central families, blessed families. So uh, those are the, uh, that is the value uh, system of families that uh, are here to accomplish God's will. And then the and then that uh, kind of family then can move heavenly fortune. Uh, we're not just following heavenly fortune, we're moving heavenly fortune. Uh, and why? Because we have become a, a family representing God and true parents. And so, uh, so we're not just following heavenly fortune then, we're moving 
uh, as a family, we're a moving heavenly fortune. And what is heavenly fortune? What is heavenly fortune? Is it just receiving blessings? Uh, uh, somebody put some uh, placards up saying, uh, let's inherit a heavenly fortune. Well, you have to know what a heavenly fortune is in order to inherit it. So, uh, so oh, yeah, all right, well, well, what is a heavenly fortune? What do you think it is? So, if God is going east and I'm going west, we were very close at the beginning, but the more time passes, the more distant we are. And so then, so where is the, the place where God, the direction that God is going is a heavenly fortune. So then, uh, easy explanation of a heavenly fortune is God's heart. Easy. The place where a God's heart exists is a heavenly fortune. And so then, uh, so then uh, people who are inheriting heavenly fortune mean that they are inheriting God's heart. And we are representing and uh, representing heavenly fortune. So then, today, we have, we, have to, we have to understand God's heart and His will, and if, when we follow that, then we can, when we do that, we can meet uh, God, we can meet true parents. And so then we, uh, we become our families that move, heavenly fortune, and then what do we do? And then what do we do? We convey uh, heaven's blessing, because heaven wants to bless, God wants to bless. And what is blessing? Uh, do you think it's just uh, giving people all sorts of good things? Uh, this is a family, so it means uh, the holy blessing, the blessing marriage is what it refers to. So what is the blessing marriage? In, uh, in, a, in the secular world too, a man and woman get married, but in that marriage and uh, uh, blessing marriage, what is the difference? The uh, secular blessing, uh, secular marriage is, uh, is a, a descendants of, of Adam and Eve coming together uh, based on uh, Satan. Uh, so that the satanic love is the center of that. So they are uh, families that came together as a result of uh, Satan's uh, love. And so as far, the farther they go, the, the far, more distant they are from God. But what is a, a blessing marriage? It is the, because uh, God's love could not come to us because of the uh, fall, but uh, true parents have come. And so then uh, through the true parents, we are able to receive God's love and then uh, come together as a husband and wife based on that uh, love, and that is uh, a bless blessing marriage. So, uh, see, so then, so we are inheriting. This is a marriage where we uh, inherit uh, God's uh, love through the uh, blessing. Uh, so that blessing, and so they, we, so then that's how we become families that can move heavenly fortune and convey heaven's blessing to our surroundings, to everyone around us. So we have to connect that to people around us. So. This is the vertical thing, has to uh, vertical love, and then has to uh, be horizontally expanded. And that is witnessing. So the witnessing, the purpose of witnessing is blessing. And so the so in the established churches as well, they witness as much as they can, and uh, uh, they uh, profess Jesus. And they've been doing. So they believe in Jesus, but they've been doing that for. But they believe for uh, two thousand years and, and witness to Jesus, but no one went to heaven, and even Jesus could only go to paradise. So in, in the uh, but in the established churches, they think that paradise and heaven are the same. Uh, but uh, wherever the Lord is, uh, that, is a, uh, that is heaven, they think, whether it is the tent or, or any place else. But paradise and heaven are different. The kingdom of heaven are different. The kingdom of heaven, you, must, you can only go there if you have uh, no original sin and be completed and go there as families. Why? Because God's true love uh, is accomplished in and realized in the kingdom of heaven. So no one is alone in the kingdom of heaven. There must be a partner. And so uh, vert vertically, there is the uh, father and son, and then there, uh, horizontally, there is a uh, husband and wife or, and uh, siblings. And so that, so it is the true family uh, shows the model of that, and then the expansion of that family is the society and the nation and the world. And then the then that, then uh, uh, we uh, live in that kind of an earthly world and go to the uh, the heavenly force. So, the, so what do you think about the spirit world in our earthly world? Where where do we go when we die? We go we go to the spirit world, right? That's what we say. That's what we say that we go to the spirit world when we die. So where is the spirit world? 
So we see the we say the life after death, the world after death. And Father said one time, uh, taught me this way. He says, it's not the world after death. It's not the place where we go after death. The, right now is the uh, is the time that we spend uh, to prepare uh, for the uh, spirit world. And right now is the spirit world. So uh, once we uh, uh, take off our physical bodies, we're immediately in the spirit world. And so within us, the physical world and the spirit world are together within us. Um, and so it is not, don't think of it as the uh, world after death. It is not the place that we go after death. So, so here, if you see this, what, what do you say this is? We call this a hand. This is a hand. So what do you see here? You only see the, this side of my hand, the palm of my hand. Isn't that right? So, but this is not the whole hand. This is just the palm. But then, we, but if you look at behind my hand, uh, we have the, uh, this part of the hand. So the two together make up the hand. So they are not separate. And so here's the palm, and here is the uh, other side of the hand, and then together they are the hand. And so today uh, we have to live like that and must uh, think that way and have that kind of concept. And so then, but we don't do that. We're not able to think that way. So we have an incorrect understanding. So then, so now we, we, even though we've learned that way, uh, because we were resting, because that is easier to, because that's easier to understand though, isn't it? So oh, people live and then they die and then they, it's easier to think it that way, that we uh, go to spirit world after death. But now let's be more mature in our understanding and now, and uh, uh, now teach it uh, correctly. So. Uh, when we were young and immature, we were taught in a way that uh, we were we could understand them. But then, as we grow more older, uh, as we come older, we need to learn in a way that is more appropriate to our maturity. And so then, so the the spirit world is not a place that we just go to after death, but uh, we call it the spirit world. Uh, but the and the spirit world and physical world are together. A, and when this uh, world here turns upside down, that is the spirit world. And Father went to the spirit world. So where, where do you think he is in the spirit world? Do you think he, he is someplace up in the air, suspended in air? Or is he maybe someplace near the sun, some uh, kingdom there? No, he's right here. Yeah, I feel him. And when I have this, uh, the, same, the same thinking as a uh, father and the same heart as father, then father is with me. And the same with Jesus. So the father said, I am in the father and uh, I am in you and you are in me. So... We have to have that kind of heart. So I am in the Father, and Father is in me. So, so then, so then, uh, then uh, my brother then is I am in my brother, and my brother is in me. This is how we have the. Then, then we have the uh, the uh, universal family. The center is one. The center is who is the center? It is the Father. Why? Because the Father uh, has the lineage. It ha he has the blood lineage. So, you received the blessing, didn't you? Do you know what the blessing is? It is the receiving heaven's uh, of blood lineage to inheriting it. So that comes to us through God's true love. And, and the fallen human beings could not receive God's true love. And so the Messiah, our, our true father comes and uh, through the true parents, uh, he gives us, uh, the, he passes on to us the uh, true love and so that we can accomplish that. That is what the uh, blessing is. That is what blessed families are. So. The blessed families, though, so must not change. No matter where they go, we c they cannot change. Why? Because there is just one center. No, even if they die, uh, they must uh, they have to be there. So another person, even if someone says kicks you out, uh, says I must be here because well, no matter where I am, I am the. Uh, we are the uh, family of our father. And so we must have that kind of thinking in our lives. So there can be no uh, division. There is no my side and your side. Do you understand? Oh, if we go that, that way, uh, there's heretics, so if orthodox here, no. Uh, so then uh, there can be heresy in orthodox like ways. The established churches say that they are orthodox and the unification churches are heresy. Uh, so the... Um, so the 
Uh, the Juda Judaism, uh, Judaism was not the Orthodox, but that Jesus was the Orthodox. So the same way. So we have to have that kind of a value system, and so, and to have have that kind of lifestyle. This is the most important uh, content that we must have today. And so, some God's blessing, heaven's blessing, is passed on to us. And then we must then give that uh, to, uh, to, what do we call it, the kind of messiahs? The tribal messiahs. So what are our blessed families? They are tribal messiahs. They are how precious uh, the messiah is. It took uh, God uh, 6,000 years to send uh, our true fathers, the messiah. He sent a God, sent a Jesus after 4,000 years, but that Messiah was not able to uh, completely accomplish all the mission of the uh, of the Messiah because the Jewish people uh, uh, and the Judaic uh, establishment uh, did not believe, they did not have faith in him. And the uh, and the John the Baptist, uh, who was prepared, uh, did not uh, did not attend him, and Joseph's family uh, and John the Baptist did not attend him, and so. The, and so he could not uh, he could not practice true uh, love. He could not uh, love his parents, and he could not uh, love his siblings, and he and he was not able to love for the uh, because the people of God because uh, and so the most important thing the and he could not he could not uh, uh, love the uh, partner through whom he could uh, uh, spread God's lineage. So then, but uh, but Jesus. We feel, was, but was a wretched person, not because of anything else, but because uh, he was not able to uh, experience a, a God's love with a partner, was not able to uh, pass on God's lineage in the world. So, what uh, Jesus suffered from the most, uh, most painful for them, for him in the spirit world, was he not able to love with God's love, was not able to receive God's love, and that uh, is was the most, uh, that's the most, uh, uh, most uh, painful thing for Jesus in the spirit world, because he could not give and he could not receive. And, and his uh, love is to give and then to help someone uh, to uh, become perfect. Uh, but uh, uh, he could not do that. And the entire world uh, turned against him. And so he went the way of the cross and he uh, said this. And so the only God understood his heart. So the, even a uh, true uh, father came to this earth and said that he would uh, resolve that resentment of Jesus and that the suffering of Jesus. So. In 1960, April 12th, he, for 10 days before that uh, event, uh, Father uh, was with Jesus and was weeping and, and shedding tears with, uh, with Jesus. That was part of Father's course. Why? Because uh, he is the Lord. And, then, and, and uh, uh, he came as God's Son and lived uh, on this earth. And also... Uh, but, but uh, God was also sorrowful, and it was now time for uh, him to uh, be to be liberated on this earth. Uh, Jesus also could not uh, could not have his, uh, a birthday uh, uh, celebrated on this earth. It is not December twenty fifth, as the Father has said. That it is the third day of the first month. Uh, and so, how much how how sorrowful Jesus must be. And so. So now, to so for God prepared for four thousand years, and how much sacrifice there was during, the, how many people were treated unjustly, as a part of the preparation for the for the Messiah to come, um, and uh, Jesus came in order to to liberate people, and then and not didn't just kill him, but they nailed they nailed nails into him, they uh, they pounded nails and they. Uh, they speared him, and so that his blood would flow. Uh, and it was not—it was not a cross of glory, but it was a, a capital punishment. Uh, and so, look, Jesus it was the was in the center, and it was the biggest one. If you look at the uh, depictions of that, and then he, so then the person, the most, he was. He was seen as the biggest betrayer uh, against uh, uh, the uh, people of, uh, of Israel uh, and against the Roman Empire. So, the, so he was uh, uh, executed in that way. So, even as he was dying on the cross, uh, he 
he he needed to be a test. He needed someone who would testify to him as the son of God, um, and as the Messiah. No, the Zachariah family didn't do that. The Joseph family didn't do that, even though they knew they did not uh, speak that way. And uh, uh, and Mary's heart also uh, could not do that. But Peter, Peter uh, testified to Jesus. He said that you are the Christ, uh, the uh, Son of the Living God. And so, and Jesus said to him, uh, Simon. Oh, he was named Simon then. Uh, Simon. Uh, the words that you speak now uh, are not uh, to come to you from a, a flesh and blood, but they come to you from, from God. And uh, so now, from now on, don't uh, call yourself a Simon anymore, but call yourself Peter. And so that Peter means rock. And so then rock is the Christ. And so then he, uh, he said that uh, he would establish uh, his uh, church on this uh, Christ. And so then uh, no, no one, no earthly power will be able to defeat that. And so then, so the, because the, because the Messiah is the rock, and then he would build his temple there. As in other words, the, in other words the, based on the, Peter's faith, uh, he would stand as the Messiah. And so then, and then, as the when he was in the court of Kaiser, uh, Jesus said to Peter, uh, "Tonight, uh, before the uh, crow, uh, before the uh, cock crows, uh, you will deny me three times." And Peter said, "No, I will not. Uh, I will not." Uh, but his heart. He had been a fisherman, and he had met Jesus. And now he said, Jesus said to him to be a fisher of men, and he cast everything away and followed Jesus. But then Peter now, uh, and then they were just living day by day. But then, but if once he threw away that net, then his family, who's going to make a living for his family? So that kind of heart, said to Pe Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. I love you. But Jesus said, no, tonight you will deny me before the cock crows. Peter's going, no, no, I love you. Even at the cost of my life, I love you. But no, Jesus said, you will do that three times. But the problem was that Satan had already been entered into Peter, creating that doubt, creating that disbelief, not understanding what Jesus was doing and not feeling joy at Jesus' work. And when those sorts of feelings arose within Peter, then Satan invaded. Then at certain times, Satan would leave, but then come back in order to attack Jesus. Denying Jesus, doubting Jesus, disagreeing with Jesus. But Peter doesn't understand this. Peter isn't aware that Satan is coming into him and going out of him. Even if he, Jesus teaches him, Peter can't understand and believe this. So what happened later on? On the Mount of Transformation, he saw Jesus together with Moses and Elijah. Should I, should I uh, build a hut for you, is what Peter said to Jesus. What did Jesus say to Peter? Satan, how can you think like that? So what about Christians? What is their understanding? When Jesus, when Peter said to Jesus, don't go the way of the cross, Jesus chastised him as being in the position of Satan. How do Christians understand that? They can't. They look at it with human eyes. But when we understand the principle and live that through our life of faith, when we understand the principle and digest the principle, 
that we can understand that concept. The principle doesn't change because we un don't understand it. So if we don't understand it, it's because of our, the sin within us and our fallen nature. That prevents us from understanding the principle. Even when we're attending Father, sometimes Father would write words. And Father, So there are times when Father is extremely critical of Peter Kim because he changed the words that Father had written but modified them. So Peter said, Peter Kim said to Father, you know, um, Father, the words that you say, I need to convey that to people in a way that they can understand, but the people of the world cannot understand what you're saying, Father, so I need to change your words. That's what he said to Father. And what did Father say? Did he say, you did well? He said, what the heck are you doing? That's, that's, un, that's, that's ridiculous. They're your words, not my words. Don't change my words. Father can change the words because God has given that permission and authority to Father. So Father said, you don't understand what you're doing now, but the way that I have um, organized my words is for the future, even if you don't understand why that is now. So you can't change them. You mustn't mustn't change them. So you can't change even a, a single letter or character of Father's words. Father emphasized this point. The problem is that when Father's alive and everything that Father put into place, when he's not there, should we go ahead and then just change them because he's not around any longer? It's unacceptable. So we ourselves, centering on our families, we have to really consider how deeply precious is the family pledge. How important we need Father's teachings. How, in, how incredible, in order to accomplish the content of the family pledge, this is why God sent the Messiah, why he gave us the truth, why he taught us for so many years, to accomplish the content of the family pledge so that we can save the human world. So you have to become the family Messiah and the tribal Messiah. But Father is the Messiah of all the world and all the universe and all the cosmos. He is the one who comes with the authority of heaven, the authority to give the blessing. But a tribal Messiah, do you have that authority? You're a tribal messiah. But can you cleanse the sins, the sins, the original sin of your own tribe? So we have to become a family that connect the blessing to those in our surroundings. In whose name? In true Father's name. In the name of the Father. I receive the authority as the tribal messiah from Father. Father is the only single one Messiah, but he multiplied himself into many hundreds and thousands of tribe Messiahs on the horizontal level. Do you understand this point? There's a lot of young people in the entire world, right? So Father, I would like to restore them, and bring them to God. But we are precious because we're in that central position. People of the world, you know, there's many wonderful people, famous people who have done excellent things, have a great lifestyle. What about us? From that viewpoint, we're kind of poor. We live in poverty. But we are the ones who 
sacrifice and live for God, and there's no one like that. So how does our family need to live? We have to live the path of the tribe of Messiahs. Messiah of Shimjong. So Father initiated the Shin Jongjok Messia, the new tribe of Messiah Providence. So what's the content of this new tribal messiah mission? It is the position of having inherited the complete victory and foundation that True Father accomplished. That is the new tribal messiahship mission. Yeah. Divine. Mm. The divine tribal messiah. Sorry, I used the word new tribal messiah. It's actually divine tribal messiah. I'm standing in that position to inherit everything that Father accomplished up until that point. All of Father's complete victory. So one time Father gathered together all the leaders from around the world and Hyung Jin Em, who is the president of the world church at that time, conducted a meeting, had the Korean church leaders come along and report, and when they reported, how did they do it? The head of the home? Oh, home group leaders. Father never heard of that. And so this was a system that they set up of their own accord. Father never heard of that, and Father was not interested in that. And because Father isn't giving his attention to that, then it would never develop. So, when I heard that, Father gave the instruction that it needs to be changed. It shouldn't be like that. It should be corrected. And maybe some people don't like to hear that. They want to do it their own way. But these kind of contents, um, we need to we need to be aware of those. So, in verse six of the family pledge, we convey heaven's blessing to our tribal, to our community, and that is the mission of the tribal Messiah. That's what we're pledging to do before God. So, family pledge number seven. As the owner of Chanaguk. Our family pledges centering on true love to perfect a world based on the culture of heart, rooted in the original lineage, through living for the sake of others, in order to perfect a world based on the culture of heart. So we receive the blessing and pass that to our surroundings. What does that mean? It's conveying the original lineage. Through the original lineage is the connection that God seeks to establish. And God's original lineage is the lineage that lives for the sake of others. So in the, in the pledge, this wording was changed. So connected and rooted in the original lineage is living for the sake of others. And the original order that Father put in these words is the way that it needs to be. And the most important thing is that we are connected with that lineage first of all, and then we can live for others. We don't, we don't change our lineage by living for the sake of others. We live for the sake of others because our lineage is being changed. So, 
Therefore, through living for the sake of others, we're able to perfect a world So the entire culture that we have in the world is an expression of what is the contents of our heart. How do we eat? What kind of food we eat? All of the realm of our activity is a realm of culture. But what's the root of that? What's the motivation for our culture? In God's world, it is the culture of heart. Because the original foundation, the original substance of the heart is God. And true Father is the one who comes, the embodiment of God's heart, and manifests that in the world. So therefore, living through living for the sake of others. So true Father, throughout the course of his entire life, life showed the example of how to live for the sake of others. Right up until the very second where he passed to the spirit world. This was Father's tradition and way of life. Sometimes he couldn't sleep because he was so exhausted. He couldn't go to the couldn't go to the toilet because he was so exhausted. Sometimes just sitting there at the table having to sleep because he couldn't even move, couldn't even eat. I've even seen father when he's been in the middle of a meal. And he's so exhausted he couldn't even chew on the food that he'd put into his mouth. He just begins to doze sitting there at the table because of his exhaustion. So, you know, if you think about someone putting food into their mouth and they don't eat it properly, maybe it's a dangerous thing. So how should I do I thought, you know, how should I relate to Father at this point? He's putting food into his mouth. He's not eating it properly. Should I? So I feel sorry for Father. And then I saw Father from his side, this kind of exhausted true father. And this was father's life. So if he, he's just there, he lets go somewhere. Even if he was tired, he'd jump up. He didn't go and lie down to relieve his exhaustion. He jumped up and said, let's go somewhere. Let's do something. So why did Father live this kind of life for us? In order that we can become his sons and daughters. Even, you know, considering one, one hour precious, investing more time in educating us, in training us. Therefore, connecting with the original lineage. And so people who are connected to the original lineage, how do we have to live? Live for the sake of others. And in that way we can create a culture and the root of that culture is, is heart, is Shimjong. And that's what we're pledging in the family pledge. We're not pledging I will become president of a nation. Who needs to do that? not the president of the nation, no famous people. It's us are the ones that need to accomplish that. So finally, the eighth verse of the pledge. As the owner of Channel Gook, our family pledges, centering on true love. As we enter the completed testament age, through absolute faith, absolute love, and absolute obedience, to achieve the ideal oneness of God and humankind in love, and in this way, perfecting the realm of liberation, the realm of com being completely free in the kingdom of God on earth and in heaven. The family federation changed this, right? The second aspect, entering the completed testament age, they changed it into Chonilguk age. So what does the meaning of Chonilguk? But Father declared the era of Chonilguk 
in 2001 on the first on the 13th of January with the coronation of God's kingship so father was uh, talking about this and explained to this up until the hour of 12 o'clock and at 12 o'clock he explained we've now entered into channel good from that point forward but he didn't use this word uh, Chonoguk era rather the completed testament age and if this was to be changed even from that point father he kept the words the completed testament age in the pledge so if father wanted to change that he would have changed it but he didn't change it and so changing it to the era of Chonoguk is false One time somebody asked me, you know, why do you use here the words as we enter the completed testament age? Why don't you use it as it's been changed to as we enter the age of Channel Gook? And I said, that's because what Father said. That's the way that Father taught me. Up until human beings have been married, centering on Satan. But for the first time, centering on God, when true parents were established, that's what completed Testament age means. We have come into the era where God's true love can be manifested through true parents so that men and women can be blessed under God's authority, not in the way that all marriages in the past were uh, done under Satan's authority. That's what the completed testament age refers to. Do not eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but grow to perfection. Fulfill the responsibility through growing and accomplish God's word and manifest that. That's the completed testament age. All of God's love and all of God's blessing is accomplished. And that era was the f came for the first time in all of human history after 6,000 years. After 6,000 years, when we first became came into the church, we had my pledge, right? Even though families were blessed, they still read the family pledge. And we said the, the um, Kajong Sun So, which is the family pledge in those days were separate. In 1995, on the 1st of May, my father was sitting at the table in Hanamdong, and father said, Bring, bring the family pledge. Gave the instruction for someone to bring the text of the family pledge. Had someone stand up and read the family pledge. Everybody got up and did that. And that was the time when the family pledge was begun. So, the family pledge that was uh, started from that time uses the word completed testament age. So, should that be changed? No. If Father needed to change that, he would have changed it. What it means is that we have entered the era where God's able to bless humankind through the blessing. That's the meaning of completed Testament age. All of humankind, 7 billion of humankind, can now enter into the era where God can bless human beings through the blessing before that we had the my pledge and then we had the uh, the short family pledge and father explained at that time when he announced the family pledge those families that did not read or could not fool the fa the previous short family pledge need to repent you have to repent before that 
that you couldn't live according to that standard. And then on that foundation, you need to start again, centering on the family pledge. If husbands and wife are not loving each other, we need to repent. So, in this way, the family pledge is a is a quite a, an awesome and terrible thing. The standard is very high. The way to do family pledge is not show up at church and everybody does it together. No, we need to repent. We need to repent that we haven't fulfilled that content. And after and through that repentance, then we come and do the family pledge with that kind of heart. If we go to a public meeting and everybody reads the family pledge, well, that's just form. It's just an external form. That's not important and it's not what's relevant. But how do we live the family pledge? How do we manifest that and accomplish the contents? For this reason, Father used a completed testament age. And in the completed testament age, we need to practice absolute faith, absolute love, absolute obedience. And when Father explained this to, to us, he explained that God himself practiced absolute faith, absolute love, and absolute obedience. God, who is the source of love, needs to have an object of love. And so there was no object of love to God then God's path is extremely painful and different, difficult. And in that time, God needed to practice absolute faith, that his object would re return. And then love with absolute love. How about God? Absolute obedience? Who would God be absolutely obedient to? God had to be absolutely obedient to true love. So true love, true love is something that God himself follows and is absolutely obedient to. Because God had absolute faith, absolute love and absolute obedience. That's why we need to live that way. We need to practice the same standard. But if you say that and you don't practice it, then you're just a hypocrite. Or if God tells us to do it without having already accomplished that standard, then God's a hypocrite. Therefore, Father himself completely preserved and manifested, practiced this word of absolute faith, absolute love, and absolute obedience. Therefore, God and human being need to become one. How do they become one? Through love. Shin in e ilche, the ideal oneness of God and humankind in love. Without love, there's no way for God and humankind to become one. After achieving that ideal of oneness between God and humankind through love, then we are able to perfect the realm of liberation and the realm of being completely free. In, in the beginning of the family pledge, we pledge to accomplish the kingdom of God on earth and in heaven, don't we? In the first verse. But now in the last pledge, it's talking about the realm of liberation and the realm of being completely free. So what's the difference between liberation and being completely free? Okay, I'd like to give you an easy example to understand this. For example, in the early 1900s, Korea was under the realm of Japan. And all of the people of Korea longed for liberation. They wanted to achieve that day when they were liberated from the Japanese imperial nation. And then it was accomplished. And all of the people gathered into the street, waving the Korean flag, celebrating liberation. But the people who could not receive liberation were the people who were in prison. If someone's in prison, they couldn't come out into the street and wave flags and, oh, our nation is liberated. And even there were some people who were in prison who were actually loyal patriots who were put there by the Japanese. 
So there's good people, bad people in prison. And when liberation happens, do you think they would just open the doors for everybody who's in the prison? No, the people who are in prison need to be judged according to their actions. They need to pass through that judgment in order to be released. Some of them were thieves. So such criminals would not just be relieved. Everybody needed to pay the price for their particular sin. And once they've paid the price for their sin or their crime, that's when they become completely free, which we say in Korean is sokbang, and it's the realm of being completely free. So we are the ones who need to liberate ourselves or become completely free from our own sins. Even the Messiah cannot remove our own sins. So, right, we have the four, right, all types of different sin, but the Messiah comes to liberate us from original sin, but the other sin we need to resolve ourselves. And if we can't do that, we need to receive punishment. But by fixing up all of those sins, and then we are become completely free, then we can move into that realm of liberation that has already been accomplished by God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there's a realm of liberation and the realm of being completely free. Realm of liberation is established by Father, but we need to, in order to enter into that, we need to resolve our own sin and crimes. So we need to... And therefore, in order to accomplish that ideal of the kingdom of God in heaven, heaven and earth, we not only need to enter into the realm of liberation, but we need to resolve all our own sinful con content to enter into the realm of being completely free within the realm of liberation. So Father explained that the family pledge is the foundation and core for the constitution of China God. It's the core of the constitution. It's the core content of what it means to live in the kingdom of God. So family pledge is the foundation and the, and the, the most basic content of living in the kingdom of China God. So if you if you contradict the law of the kingdom of heaven, it means that you're contradicting the law that allows you to accomplish true families. And you'll receive judgment from... So when you go into the court to receive judgment, they'll be the first person to stand in the court in the kingdom of heaven. That time will come. You have to prepare for that time. Nobody had the uh, qualification to accomplish that until now. However, when the, the constitution and the law of the kingdom of heaven is established, our Father prepared us for that by teaching us the content of that. Father said that when the Chanuguk is established and uh, uh, there has to be judgment by law, there is one particular person who will be the first person to stand before the law. And he told me the name of that person, but he also told me to not to tell anyone else. And this is a heavenly secret. Okay. So up to here, I'll bring my talk into conclusion. We're completing our morning, so I'd like to pray. Loving Heavenly Father, your humble Son come before you at this sanctuary church established by you, sharing True Father's words, testify to True Father's words. You permitted us to understand that ideal. So from today, we're having the opportunity for eight days to look at this content. Father, you established me 
So I pray that I can teach this content as you taught me, as True Father taught me, until we conclude the entire um, seminar. Please be with us. Please allow the content to flow smoothly from your voice to everyone here. Father, we're not here because of our great love or our great qualification or merit, but simply because we followed Father and we wanted to hold on to Father. And when I think of the fact that we're here with that kind of sons and daughters who have followed Father, I deeply pray and ask, please manifest your love to these children. Father, from the first generation, second, third generation, let everybody live in the realm of your heart and accomplish the ideal of true blessed families. In the past, not anybody was had the qualification to do the family promise, but now in the era of the family pledge, everybody who receives a blessing is able to even those who have not received the blessing can participate and read the family pledge. We're in the area where your lineage and blessing can come to all of humankind. We pray that all of humankind will come into the realm of true love. Loving Heavenly Father, please let us deeply remember your will in our hearts. Today we went through the content of the Family Pledge. Please grant that we can all deeply comprehend and understand that content. Thank you so much. Please guide us to be strong, faithful, and daring in order to accomplish this content before you. I sincerely ask and pray, report these things in the name of Central Blessed Family, Yu Jong Ok Aju. Thank you very much.